Hey everybody, welcome. Welcome to week five. Welcome, welcome. Today we're going to talk about granular synthesis. It's already running, so it is. How about that? All right, granular synthesis, topic of the day. So, uh, I've covered this in my tutorials. I've got two tutorials, in fact, granular synthesis part one and two, tutorials 25 and 26. They both deal with granular synthesis pretty, pretty comprehensively, so definitely strongly encouraged supplemental viewing for this lecture. If you haven't checked out those tutorials, check them out. If you've already watched them, uh, maybe consider watching them again. I don't know. So basically, granular synthesis is a it's a process that uh, takes a sound and breaks it up into lots of little tiny short sound segments and then through some process reconstructs a new sound using those segments. So you break it up into little grains and then kind of uh, resynthesize. All right, I've already booted the server. And uh, both these two tutorials deal, uh, uh, introduce granular synthesis and, and talk about it through a unit generator called grain buff. And this is a unit generator that I have come to use pretty regularly, pretty much 100% of the time when I want to do granular synthesis stuff. It's pretty good. It's a pretty good UGen. So we'll start there. But because I don't want to repeat too much content uh, here that I've already covered in tutorials 25 and 26, I think I'm actually going to mostly deal with a, a different, um, different granular UGen, T grains. But we'll start with grain buff just to kind of get all on the same page. Hey, Seaborch. Welcome to the stream. Okay, so got my notes here. Um, we are, you know, keeping with the the topic of last week, which was live looping and overdubbing and stuff like that, like building a little looper program. I want to focus most of this lecture on live granular synthesis, but we're going to start with um, granular synthesis on a pre-recorded audio file. So on my desktop, I've got a sound file called What Happens, and it's just some audio of me that I ripped off of uh, one of my tutorials. What happens if you go above the maximum number of grains? Does it crash the server? Does it blow up like a recursive filter? So just given ourselves some audio to work with, and I think speech is a pretty good candidate for granular synthesis because a bunch of interesting things happen. In SuperCollider, when you're doing granular synthesis, you always want to be working with a mono buffer. And this one happens to be one channel. So that's good. If you want to granulate a stereo file, the simplest thing to do is just read in one of those two channels. And uh, you can do that. Let's free this for a second. And we'll copy this by using the method buffer.read channel. And then you can skip ahead to the channels argument and then just read the zeroth channel. So this is harmless for one channel sound files because it's going to read in the, uh, hey, Andre, it's going to read in the very first or zeroth channel and ignore any other ones. So stereo sound files, it just reads in the left channel. Mono sound files just reads in the the only channel. What happens if you right. same thing? This is uh, this is for granulating stereo files. Just read one channel. So you want to make sure your buffer is one channel. So I'm going to copy and paste in a little bit of synthdef code that I made ahead of time. Here it is. It's a synthdef called grain buff. And the meat and potatoes here is just grain buff. And grain buff has a lot of arguments. This is kind of true in general of a lot of granular unit generators, not just in SuperCollider, but I, I remember when I was working in C sound years ago, a lot of the granular uh, opcodes in C sound also had a lot of, some of them had a lot, <laughs> like you know 20 or 30 arguments. So let's um, go through one by one. We, uh, we've got our variables. Uh, I've got an envelope. It's a fixed duration envelope. So it just goes up, stays up, goes down. It's got an attack, a sustained duration, and a release duration. Uh, some curves. And then uh, we can say, you know, env, and then close the env.kr, turns it into an envgen. 
and this is the done action. So just a it's going to be a six six second granular excerpt by default. Uh, this sound file is just over six seconds, so that's close enough. So grain buff. Remember when you're inside of a, a method call, like you know dot something and then open parentheses, you can press Shift Command Spacebar. On Windows, it's Shift Control Spacebar probably to look at the arguments. I've actually gone ahead and typed them in. I think it's just it just starts to look a little crazy when it's just a bunch of numbers and you don't really know what they mean at a glance. So the first one is number of channels. This is the number of output channels. Um, and I'd like it to be two because we're streaming and two makes sense. Trigger is a signal. Uh, when this signal undergoes a non-positive to positive transition, a grain is generated. And dust is, I'm just going to plot a little bit of this. Um, okay, so we got a little we got a little bit there. Oh, we got a couple there. So um, it doesn't really render very well, but uh, in this span of five centiseconds, we got one, two, three random little triggers. So each of these corresponds to a grain being created at that point in time. So dust is a pretty good choice for just making a bunch of stochastic grains kind of, and this is a density, so approximately 40 grains per second. Grain duration is a value in seconds. It's how long the grain that is generated is. And so in this case, it's going to be uh, 0.05 seconds. The buffer, we want to granulate. I'm just putting in an argument here with a default buff num of 0, but we'll make sure to specify B when we call the synth. Grain rate, 1 is normal, 2 is twice as fast, 0.5 is twice as uh, slow. Probably the correct thing to do here is buff rate scale, providing the same buffer, and then you know multiply that. This is just in case the buffer's sample rate and the server's sample rate are different. This will compensate. Uh, pause or position. This is where in the buffer the grain is generated from. And I've got a line right now which goes from 0 to 1 over the duration of the buffer. So it's just kind of scrubbing through the buffer and pulling out grains as if it were playing through it normally. Interp, this comes into play if we mess with this rate value, if we make it something other than 1. Um, because when we, you know, raise or lower the pitch, it's actually stretching and compressing the original waveform in the buffer. And then it has to be resampled because the, the original samples are kind of too stretched out or compressed. They don't line up with the server sample clock anymore. So interpolation is, is how it does the guesswork. And 1 means no interpolation. 2 means linear. 4 means cubic. It's a little, little weird that 4 means cubic. You think it's going to be 3, but... It's 1, 2, and 4. Uh, I think linear is usually a good balance here. So just linear interpolation. Pan. This is the same as the pan argument in a pan 2. Negative 1 is hard left. Positive 1 is hard right. And env buff num. This is the envelope shape on each grain. And negative 1 uses a built-in han, han envelope, which is it's just a bell curve shape. So it's just kind of a nice smooth. I don't think it's might be sinusoidal, but it's it's kind of like one cycle of a sine wave. Don't know the exact math. We apply the six second envelope. We got an amplitude control, and we send it out. That's basically it. So all we have to do now is just say synth grain buff, and make sure we're actually granulating the correct buffer. So this should make sound. What happens if you go above the maximum number of grains? Does it crash the server? Does it blow up like a recursive filter? And Make, I think we can go all the way up to full amplitude. What happens if you go above the maximum number of grains? Does it crash the server? Does it blow up like a recursive filter? So just a few variations on that. It's pretty pretty simple stuff here. But um, you know, for example, the line can go backwards from one to zero. I think I forgot to mention pause expects a value between zero and one. Uh, could be a static value, could be a dynamic value, but zero represents the beginning of the sound file, and 1 represents the end. doesn't matter how long it is. It's always 0 and 1. So making it start at 1 and go to 0, that's going to make the pointer read backwards, uh, scrub backwards through the buffer. So you'll get kind of the words still like each grain is playing forward, but the pointer is moving backwards.
yeah, we could do a fixed value, just kind of take grains from exactly halfway through the buffer. I think there's silence there. Let's try a different number. There we go. Yeah, just so happens that I guess there's nothing halfway through this particular uh, <laughs> audio file. Yeah, <laughs> I think it's like right here. So we were just grabbing grains from nothing. Just something to keep in mind with granular synthesis. Uh, right, I'm, you know, the rest of that's just, this is pretty self-explanatory. We could, uh, you know, make more grains or fewer grains. And so now we get very sparse grains. So. Uh, grain duration. We can make these really short, and then they're very kind of crackly. Don't think it really matters if we do KR or IR here. Uh, what is buff.kr? Get this line again so we can go kind of through the file. All right, so the grains are kind of too small to even get a sense of language. What happens if you go above the maximum number of grains? Does it crash the server? Does it cool? And then I think a really fun thing to do is kind of uh, stretch out the, you know, make it go slower or faster. So we can multiply the duration of the buffer by two. So it's actually going to take twice as long to go all the way through. It's going to it's going to end the envelope is still 6 seconds, so it's still going to end after 6 seconds. What happens if you go above the maximum number of grains? Right. Stuff like this. What happens if you go Yeah, so lots of possibilities here. And really what I should be doing is making more arguments, you know, like uh, so that I can actually specify them down here. But this is all, you know, we're we're introducing a relatively new UGen here, but the rest of it is just basic synthdef stuff. So I am going to kind of move on here, and uh, let's switch over to tgrains. Um, you can probably read the help file and just kind of tinker around with this yourself, but I'd like to um, kind of switch gears and make a version of this that uses tgrains just to show some subtle differences between the UGENs. And then we'll go from tgrains into a live version. So we're going to be granulating my live microphone signal instead of this uh, pre-recorded file. All right, we'll do the same thing, uh, same envelope, and tgrains. Uh, everything else is pretty much going to be the same. We're just swapping one granular unit generator for another. And I'm going to copy my code here to save a little time. And we'll look at the tgrains help file. So it's kind of similar in a lot of ways. The first argument is number of channels. Next one is a trigger signal to determine when uh, grains are generated. Then the third thing is the buffer. And uh, what I'm going to yeah, we'll just say um, buff.kr, give it a give it a starting value here. You might be able to do this. I don't think it really matters too much, though. We're just going to make sure we specify it when we call the synth. All right, rate, same thing. Same thing as grain buff. It's just a playback ratio. Then we have an argument called center pause. A little bit different here. Center pause is the position in the buffer in seconds at which the grain envelope will reach maximum amplitude. And the grain envelope is always a Hanning envelope, which I think is the same thing as a Han envelope. There's like there's Hamming envelopes, there's Hanning envelopes. I think Hanning and Han are the same thing. Don't don't quote me on that. I don't know, but it's it's a it's basically a little sinusoidal bell curve thing. So it's always the same envelope, and we give it a, a value in seconds where the peak of that bell curve aligns. And so I've I've got it set right now to zero. I might give it a default value of like 0.5, just to put it not quite at the beginning of the file. Grain duration, 
I think this is in seconds. Yeah, it's in seconds. Um, pan, same thing. Amplitude and interpolation. In fact, I'm not even going to bother with these. It's fine. We have an amplitude control down here, and the default interpolation is probably two. No, it's actually four. No, okay. I think we have the overhead for extra CPU power. Should be fine. And now I'm going to copy this, bring it down. And we're going to say synth G grains uh, buff B. Oh, that's working. I'm going to change this to one. And I'm going to say pause one, two, point five. It's a little quiet. It's extremely quiet. Actually, um, oh, you know why? The default amp value is 0.1, which is weird. That's unusual. Usually you have just a mull and an add at the end. So I am going to make this one, actually. I should not have deleted that. So this should be quite a bit healthier in terms of signal level. So in a lot of ways, very similar to grain buff. Um, the main difference, I think, is that the position is not on a normalized scale between 0 and 1. Instead, it's an, a value in seconds. So um, right, it's pretty straightforward. Let's now, um, I think this you know, should be pretty, pretty self-explanatory what all these things do. It's really quite similar to grain buff. Let's do a live version. So just like with our looper. Nope, not read. Alloc. So we're going to make, rather allocate, a brand new empty buffer. It's going to be three seconds long. Uh, by default, it's one channel, which is what we need for granular synthesis. Right? Nice empty buffer, ready for us to do whatever we want. Okay. <clears throat> so... We're going to copy this stuff. And we're going to modify it. We'll call this tgrains underscore live. The first thing I want to do is um, change this envelope. Because now we're thinking of this tgrains synth def as a live processing effect. The, the thing we're going to granulate is this buffer C, in which we're going to be dynamically filling with sound using my microphone. So I don't think it makes as much sense to have a fixed duration envelope because we'll start it and then six seconds later it'll just go away. But really we'd like it to just hang around indefinitely so we can just, you know, mess around and, and make some sound. So <clears throat> I'm going to make this an ASR envelope. And ASR is attack sustain release. So we'll have an attack, which will be a tenth of a second, a sustain level, which is just going to be one, and a release, which I guess will be one also. So it fades out a little bit. Uh, and then for KR, we need the done action, and then a gate, which is initially going to be in an on state. So the envelope will begin, and as long as gate remains positive, the envelope will continue sustaining here until we set gate to zero and it fades out. All right, so we can't just say T grains right away. We have to do a little bit of prep work here. So first of all, we need a sound source. So we're just going to read in my microphone signal and call it mic. So just to take a step back for a second, the concept here is going to be we're going to be taking some live signal, the microphone, we're going to be using a process that records it into this buffer, buffer C. And uh, this T grains is also going to be generating grains from that buffer at the same time. And I have a little diagram that I pulled off one of my tutorials, just took a screenshot. Um, the main focus here is the buffer object at the bottom. So this is our buffer C that we just allocated, you know, 
generally speaking. And we're going to have some pointer signal, just a ramp that goes from start to end again and again and again. And that is going to drive the position of this uh, record pointer represented by a red arrow here. So as the pointer goes from start to end, this pointer moves from beginning to end and just records some signal into the buffer. And it goes around and around and around. And we treat the buffer as if the end and beginning are connected. So as soon as it gets to the end, it jumps immediately back to the beginning. Uh, question in the chat. Uh, M.new is just a non-gated envelope. M.asr is a gated... Uh, yeah, M.asr is a gated envelope. M.new is like a uh, very... It's the most generalized version. You can actually specify some additional stuff in nf.new to make it a sustaining envelope. But um, in most cases, yeah, nf.new is a non-gated envelope. So we have this record pointer going around and around and around. And the idea with live granular synthesis is we have a grain pointer that is driven by the same pointer signal, but we subtract some amount from that pointer signal represented by this green value. And so the grain pointer kind of chases the record pointer around. It's always like some small amount behind the record pointer. Uh, and so we're kind of granulating the thing that we recorded just a fraction of a second ago. The main consideration in this setup is that there's always a discontinuity. At any given point in time, the record pointer is writing new stuff and overwriting old stuff. And so right here, there's a click. And if we if this pointer gets too close, or if we just, you know, our algorithm creates a grain which is large enough that it spills past the record pointer, then we are including a click in our grains. And then the, sa the, the sound gets all clicky and, and crunchy and gross. And I have an example of that a little bit later. So that's the main thing to keep in mind, is when you set up a, a sort of pointer to record and play back grains, you just want to make sure this pointer is always behind the record pointer enough so that we never actually hear this discontinuity. So let's get a pointer signal. And for this, I'm going to use phaser, which I'm pretty sure we used that last week. Um, and it's going to have a rate of 1, which means uh, this is an audio rate phaser. So every sample, the value of the phaser signal increases by 1. So it starts at 0. Next sample, it's 1. Then it's 2. Then it's 3. Every sample goes up by one. It's going to start at zero, and it's going to go to the number of frames in the buffer. Right. So this is simply counting from zero all the way up to the number of frames in the buffer. And technically, this value here is the wrap point. So when it arrives at this value, instead of outputting this value, it actually goes back to zero. So it goes all the way up to buff frames minus 1. And then the next value is back to 0, which is perfect because we're going to use this to index into a buffer. And the first frame in a buffer has index 0, and the last frame has index number of frames minus 1, because we start counting at 0. And so from here, we can very easily uh, revisit our friend buff right. And I really love how simple it is with buff right when you have, we've got our, it's the, the arguments are, what do you want to record? Where do you want to record it? And uh, when do you want to record it? Um, and I'm going to actually go up here and say buff equals buff.kr0. Because I'm, I'm using buff in multiple places, like here, here, here. And instead of typing it all out, I'm just going to make a variable that holds a reference to this um, uh, buff num control. So here I can just say buff buff and buff okay yeah so that's we we've got our input signal we've got our pointer and we're using it to record the input signal into our buffer which is going to be this empty one called c so now um we just need to granulate and so we have our t grains this can all stay the same this is fine this is fine this is fine center position. We're not just going to pull grains from 0.5 seconds into the buffer. We're going to actually use this pointer signal. So we just want to take the pointer signal. The first thing is that this is a value in samples. 
it's count was counting frames, I guess, but that's pretty much the same thing as samples when we're dealing with a one channel buffer. And that's what buff write needs. In fact, it needs a sample counter. It's got to give sample sample index values. But that's not what center pause needs. T grains for its center position needs a value in seconds, but that's a really easy conversion. We take a value in samples, this thing, and we just divide by the sample rate. Dot IR. This is a handy unit generator which just returns the sample rate. So uh, samples divided by the sample rate gives us that equivalent value in seconds. But that's not quite enough because we also need to say, uh, we need to push this grain pointer back a little bit. So we'll just push it back um, by a second. Right. And a, a responsible thing to do here is to realize that if the pointer signal is at the very beginning, then this is going to be a value at or very close to zero. So if we subtract one, we're going to be getting some negative value. Like, you know, pull a grain from the point in the buffer at minus 0.5 seconds or minus one second. It doesn't make sense. So the responsible thing to do here is use a modulo operation uh, so that it is, and I'll explain this in just a second, uh, buff door buff so that it's here's here's how modulo works I'm just going to do a little bit of surprise math here um, if we have some value and we want to modulo within some range uh, as long as this is within range there's no difference so we're it's modulo is basically a wrapping operation so this is all fine this is all fine but as soon as a value gets uh, uh, at or above the modulo operator, it wraps back to the beginning, right? And another way to think of this is division, just division, but only taking the remainder. So like 26 divided by 10, well, 10 goes into 26 twice, and then there's six left over. So 26 modulo 10 returns six. Uh, 57 divided by 10, well, this goes into 57 uh, five times, and then there's seven left over, so it returns seven. And we're kind of doing a similar thing here. We're saying, okay, we're, we got some value in seconds. We're going to subtract one, but then we want to wrap it so that it is somewhere between zero and the duration of the buffer. And I know I uh, went through all the trouble to do this, but actually center pause will do the wrapping automatically. So if you get a value that is outside of the, uh, the duration of the buffer, the wrapping operation, that modulo operation, will happen automatically. At least that was my impression, testing it out before class. Um, I think this will work. And what did I do? I didn't define my pointer signal. Okay, that it's happy now. So we're going to get rid of this. And we are going to be granulating C. And... Uh, here we go. So we should hear me one second later. Hello? Hello? Hmm. No signal coming out. All right. Let me figure this out here. Did I delete something here? Let's make sure. We still have our buffer. Nothing is being recorded into it. Oh, I know why. That's why. I renamed my synth diff. So now it should work. So now it should work. And it does. And it does. That's my own fault for That's my own fault for renaming my synth depth. Renaming my synth depth. So this is sort of what we'd expect. So this is sort of what we'd expect. I'm going to hit command period so I'm not talking to myself. Um, we are writing a microphone signal uh, into a buffer using buff read and phaser. And then we're just taking that very same pointer signal, subtract some amount from it, and... Uh, and then generating grains from there. So there's a lot of flexibility here. Uh, the main thing I want to point out immediately is the grains are 0.05 seconds long, and the pointer is one second behind the record pointer. So that is sort of like um, this is one second, right? There's a one second difference here. But this is generating grains that are only uh, 0.05 
seconds long. So they're quite a bit shorter. And also in the case of T grains, this, this pointer represents the center position of the grain, not the beginning, which is the case in grain buff. So we have even more flexibility here. So it's going to be making these little grains all the way back here. So if we really wanted to, we could uh, take the um, center position and, and make it, you know, like 0.1 or something. So this way the echo will be much closer to uh, my live signal. So, so it, sounds it sounds something like, like this. this. So, so the, the grains, grains are, are coming, coming much, much, much more quickly. quickly. And, and let's, let's, let's do another, another little, little variation, variation here. here. Another little variation. Uh, we'll, um, in fact, I think this is, this is almost like, we, we should probably make a separate variable for this because we're cramming a, a, a non-insignificant expression into an argument here. And it might, might kind of get out of control if we don't nip it in the bud. So we'll call that pause, make a variable called pause. And here we'll say pause equals. So we're just going to do the work up here, going to give ourselves a little bit of space. So let's bring this back by a quarter of a second. And we'll say pause equals pause plus some noise. It's going to be a relatively fast moving noise generator. And uh, the grains are still 0.5. So I think we could even like do something like this. So this is our, our sort of base grain pointer position, which is a quarter second behind the record pointer. And then every time a grain is generated, it's going to, I mean, well, this, this pause value is being modulated by some, I don't even know if modulator is the right term here. We're adding some noise to it and it's fast moving noise, a hundred values a second. So they could be, uh, we could be offsetting this by as much as 0.2 in either direction. So it might be 0.45 seconds behind or 0.05 seconds behind. And I think because our grains are so short, this is still okay. Uh, we're not going to bump into the discontinuity. So now it should sound like really garbled and like my voice is kind of kind of all over the place. Yeah, it sounds sounds like granular synthesis. So this is your basic basic kind of granular effect. Well, it's really hard to to talk over this while I'm while I'm hearing myself. Um, so that's a anyway. Hope this is making making sense. It's a lot of uh, cool variations we can do on this, and just by virtue of the fact that there's so many parameters. There's the density of the grains. Um, let's just kind of mess around. I'll make a, I'll copy this just so we can preserve the, the functional version. Uh, we'll say like impulse.kr50 uh, uh, and we're going to do no randomness and let's see what happens <laughs> so impulse is uh, like dust it generates impulses but it does so at a very specific frequency exactly 50 impulses or little spikes per second what's this gonna sound like this is hello i think they're all mixing together here so what if we make this really short so how about now and eh, it doesn't sound very interesting either uh yeah, okay, maybe this is not a, a fruitful direction. So I'm just gonna undo a bunch of stuff here. Uh, I had some had some variations written down ahead of time. Let me let me go ahead and show you the discontinuity problems that we can run into. And I'm gonna copy copy and paste. Okay, so here's an example. I've it's it's very much the same. Um, I'll try to make it look very similar here. So we have our buff. Uh, yeah, we got our signal. We got this. I actually have these switched. Um, so I'm saying position equals the you know the pointer converted to seconds. Uh, I'm subtracting 0.15. Uh, I've got exactly 20 grains per second. The playback rate is two, so you're going to hear my voice an octave higher, which is going to sound hilarious. And then the duration of the grain is 0.3. And this is, I think this should be okay. At least, I, at least it was earlier. So we'll just go ahead and zero the buffer, clear it out, and start it again. Hello, hello, hello. 
Hello. Ah. It's a little quiet. Let's get rid of these. Um, let's get rid of that. And... No, I think one is fine. We don't need any of this stuff. Hello? Hello? Ah! Uh, okay, so it, it, it sounds okay. Well, relatively speaking. But there's no clicks. There's a little bit of a 20 hertz sound, like kind of going on. It's like a little frequency stuff happening. Uh, 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 uh. But it's a... It's a clean signal. It's, there's really nothing nothing wrong with it. Um, it's awfully quiet, though. I wonder why. It's not awfully quiet. So if we intentionally mess this up, like we add 0.15 seconds to the pointer, so now it's kind of like... Um, uh, it's we're, we're, Instead of subtracting this pointer, we're actually kind of pushing it ahead a little bit. So now we're, it's it's going to be right at or just in front of the record pointer. So it's going to be grabbing grains that are, that contain audio that's in the process of being overwritten. So it's going to be grabbing that discontinuity quite a bit. And this is, this should sound pretty bad, I think. Uh, hello, clicks everywhere, clicks everywhere. And it actually takes a full cycle for the grain pointer to come back around and, and like get the old stuff. It's yeah, you just it's it takes a little it's a little bit of a visualization exercise. You've got uh you know, normally you've got the record pointer in out in front. And so it's writing and this is just grabbing new stuff. But if this gets too close or in front of it, then um it's like reading grains and then stuff that was recorded at that moment in time gets recorded and doesn't get overwritten until the until the, the both pointers go around again and the grain pointer grabs a little bit more audio and and then if you if you've stopped talking it takes another f so it's all messed up it's just, it's like you, this is the thing you have to watch out for this this is the thing just so as you're doing live granular synthesis you always want to be listening for clicks and for situations where there's like leftover audio one buffer cycle later so yeah Breaks if you change this minus to A+. plus. Okay, back to our functional version, though. I want to see as, how many variations we can do before the end of class. And the first one is a very fun multi-channel expansion version. Uh, sorry, I missed a couple questions. Um, you can increase the rate argument. Um, so the rate argument is not... Um, I assume you're talking about this one. This is the transposition of the individual grain. So it doesn't change the speed of the rate pointer. This controls the speed of the rate pointer. It's the, the amount of increment per sample for phaser. So if you make this two, uh, oh, weird stuff will happen because it's going to be like skipping every other sample. And so it's like every other sample is going to be, it's just going to be real messed up. Um, so, so no, you can change the rate, but yeah. And if if you watch the granular synthesis tutorials, when the when the rate gets higher, like the the playback rate of the grains, it actually needs to take twice as much audio. And then, like if if the rate is two, it has to take a grain that's twice as big and then squash it down to half the size in order to go up that octave and give you the grain size that you wanted. So it's pitch shifting up that's usually the problem. Pitch shifting down is less. Uh, no, you can do it yourself. I'll upload the code. I've I've got a, an agenda here, but I appreciate the enthusiasm. Okay, so I'm going to do a multi-channel expansion version of this. Uh, so what I'm going to try to do like a bunch of T grains uh, with different decay, different not decay times, delay times. So we have this initial grain pointer, which is quarter second behind. Uh, and we might, we can, yeah, let's, let's do it from here. So this, this version is going to be lots of grain pointers. Uh, to give you a visual 
idea of what's going to happen here. I'm just going to make like a, gr a green one here, a green arrow here, 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 here. Just a bunch of different grain pointers kind of tagging along behind. So we'll get like an echo kind of thing. So what I'm going to say is pause equals pause minus the array 0, 0 0.25, dot, dot, 1.5. I cannot type. Okay. So this here is a monophonic signal. Pointer is just a one channel phaser and pause is just a mathematically manipulated version of that signal. So it's still a ramp signal. But here we're subtracting an array of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven values, which is going to give us a seven channel signal. It's an array of seven of these pause ramps each one with a different value subtracted from it. We're getting into sort of the mental gymnastics of multi-channel expansion. And then each one of these, I'm going to add, or I'm going to add to this array of seven noise generators, I'm going to add a unique, because right, this, this is an array of, of seven unique LF noise generators. So each one of these seven pause signals in this array of seven things has its own unique randomness to it. Right? might drop this down a little bit just to I think it'll be fine either way but so then here um, pause or again it pauses a seven channel signal it's seven ramp signals each of which has unique randomness in it and they're all sort of staggered at quarter second intervals through the through the file you know so it's like imagine a Another green one a quarter second back, another one quarter second back, quarter second back. So there's seven of them, and each one of them is kind of like wiggling around a little bit. Uh, and we plug that into T grains. And that creates, uh, a well, it's an array of seven signals. And because num channels is two, this is actually an array of seven signals. Each signal is stereophonic. So it's a, an array of size seven that contains seven arrays, each of size two. It's easier if we just do like one of these. We'll just post LN right here. So yeah, you can see it is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven two channel signals in an array. And that's that's not something we want to write to a bus. It's gonna get all confused. Uh, if we made this a one channel T grains, then it's just a standard sort of seven uh, signals. But we actually want Whoa, not seven, <laughs> two. So, but it's very easy to, to mix this down. It's an array of seven stereo signals, so we just need to say sum, right? When you, when you say, when you have the array one, two, three, four, dot sum, you get the sum of all those things. And the exact same thing's happening here. We have seven stereo signals in an array, and we're just gonna sum them, and we'll get one stereo signal, right? So that looks much better. We have just a stereo signal. Uh, don't don't pay too much mind to these output proxy binary opugens. These are like under the hood classes that um, uh, just help with the synth def building process and manipulating eugens. So uh, we just this is important because if we don't sum this, we're going to get some wacky seven channel thing, and we're not going to hear all the channels. Uh, so I think this is going to work. Oh, there's one last thing. I well we'll, we'll do it this way first, um, and we're going to zero the buffer just to empty out old stuff. Hello. Hello. So there's many echoes. <laughs> okay, let's command period on that. Many echoes. The, the thing I was going to do here is actually do the same thing with amplitude. So we're going to say that times array dot uh, geom. Uh, and seven, because we got seven individual stereo signals in this T grain. It's, it's an array of seven T grains. So the first one will be one, and they're going to decrease by three decibels. So this, just this line here with, is just um, the array one, an amplitude value corresponding to three decibels quieter, six decibels quieter, right? nine decibels down, 12, 15, 18. <clears throat> we don't even need this one. That's it's no need to multiply by one. So we can just provide this. And so the what this does is the um, the close the the pointer closest to the record head 
has the highest amplitude. And as we go back by quarter second increments, uh, they get quieter by three decibels. So this kind of sounds a little bit more natural, I guess. Hello. <laughs> Granular <laughs> echo <laughs> in <laughs> space. <laughs> There's no sound in space. No sound in space. Right. And at this point, what I what I had the urge to do is make a make a reverb, and I'm gonna paste it in because I feel like it. So we make a bus, and I made a reverb synth F using Gverb. So we read in our stereo signal. Gverb technically is supposed to take a mono input. Um, I don't. I, I think it doesn't like blow up if you give it a stereo signal, but it does something that you might not be expecting. So I decided to just take the stereo signal and do dot sum. So I'm just mixing left and right into mono, and it outputs a stereo signal. I'm I'm pretty sure. Yeah, it's a two channel, two channel reverb. So big room, four second decay, low pass filter for damping, and then I'm blending it. So sort of the the uh, the wet is twenty percent of the dry, and then we send it out. And clearing this, running this, and then if we bring up the node tree and hit command period, there's our reverb effect, which is cool. So that's there on the that's me closing the meters. Don't worry about that. And now if we go grab this code and zero the buffer and make sure to send it out to our bus. And I broke something. What is your... <laughs> it's no comma. Whoops. Okay. Now it's... It's a little bit of crunchiness, which I think that there's a little bit of crunchiness at the beginning. That is... I think something's wrong with my interface. It's like... It sounds like clock desync to me, but let's do it again. Zero. Hello. Now we're in a big auditorium with granular synthesis. Okay. All right, I think I have time for one more variation. And uh, it is going to be a harmonizer example, which is lots of fun. I'm gonna tweak a few values here. Uh, let me see what I have for my harmonizer example. So I'm subtracting, I'm just going back uh, 0.15 seconds. Usually for a harmonizer, you want the grain pointer to be pretty close to the record pointer because you want to hear the harmonization kind of immediately, like as uh, right after it's recorded. <laughs> yeah, bottom of the well <laughs> synth. Uh, and let's see, so we're not gonna do any of this multi-channel stuff here and we could do a little bit of randomness. We don't need seven of them, though. We'll just kind of shuffle it around by 0.02 seconds in either direction. Uh, I'm going to do a lot of grains, so we're going to increase the grain density. Um, this is where we're going to get our harmonization, but make sure this looks good, too. Uh, we'll vary the, the grain duration a little bit, so it's not always exactly 0.05. We'll make them a little bit longer. So this is going to be randomly between 0 0.06, 0 0.08. Let's do a little bit of panning. I don't want to do a full spread. I think we'll just do kind of like this. So it's like a little bit of medium amount of spatial action. OK, so for rate, we're going to multiply this by an argument called harm, dot kr, because I want to be able to change it in real time. Harm for harmony not because I'm going to harm your ears. And we're going to do some semitones here. And we're going to convert these to a frequency ratio using MIDI ratio. So just, just as a reminder, 0 dot MIDI ratio is 1. So any frequency times 1 is itself. 12 is 2. So it's not exactly 2, but who cares? Uh, that's going to, you, you take this value by a frequency, it goes up by an octave, minus 12.5. Uh, so one is the ratio for a semitone higher, et cetera, et cetera. So we're doing multi-channel expansion here. So we're going to have four. We're going to make sure we, we need to sum these again, because if we, if we don't, it's going to, 
Excuse me. Oh, I forgot a parentheses somewhere up here. Yeah. Um, got to change this. That should just be one. Yep. Okay. So, uh, we've we're we're taking this T grains and we're making four an array of four versions. This one down nine semitones. This one down seven. This one down four. And this one as is. And then we need to sum them all together so that it is just a regular stereo signal. Uh, and because there's four of them, I actually am going to turn this down a little bit. And don't really need that post LN, though it's harmless. Clear that. Here we go. Ah. Ah. Uh, <laughs> let's go to the reverb. This will sound nice. Ah. Oh, yeah, that's that's not super collider. That's that's something else. That's something else. Ah. Yeah, the crackliness. Uh, I don't know. Try this at home. I don't think you'll get crackliness. I don't think that's a buffer discontinuity problem. I think that's that's um my interface being wonky. Hello. Ah. If I, I should really be setting the gate to zero so we get a nice fade out, but I'm lazy. Let's do, Let's do x dot set harm. Uh, we'll start with the original one. Do -do -do. Uh, now we'll just change some of these values as I sing. Yeah. yeah, resistance, resistance is, is futile. futile. We are we Borg. Are well, this is, is fun. fun. Yeah, very, very video game monster voice. Um, so that is, I think we're, that's going to be it for this video. I, I think live granular synthesis is a lot of fun. Uh, lots of creative possibilities, you know, um, Harmonization with a live signal, definitely possible. Lots of grain pointers possible. You can't really do you can't really do time stretching be, with live synthesis because you don't have a time machine. I mean, you can make a really long buffer and then just kind of just have the playback pointer move slower than the um record pointer, but that's the, that's kind of a limitation generally speaking of live granular synthesis. If these two pointers go at different speeds, they'll eventually cross each other and you'll get a, like a crunchy click in your audio somewhere. So, um, I don't know, there's there's maybe some funky workarounds, but they're kind of tricky. For the most part, it's just a great way to just sprinkle some granular stuff on a live signal. It could be a lot of fun. Just the main thing to do is make sure you stay behind that discontinuity. Um, it's kind of a balancing act because you sometimes want this pointer to be pretty close. So you can um, make the grains really small, but give yourself a lot of them and jitter the pointer just a little bit so it's not um you know just not always so it's not a direct echo but it's actually a little bit kind of uh it's like kind of a cloud of grains a little bit garbly yeah 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 all right well uh that's gonna be it so thanks for watching everybody i hope you have some fun with these with the live granular synthesis stuff looking forward so um yeah homework two that's due in two weeks so i feel like three week Turn around, hopefully a generous amount of time for you to get some stuff done. Uh, happy to take questions if anyone wants to stick around in the chat. Um, next week we're going to get into all sorts of signal processing effects, which I guess this is kind of a signal processing effect. But um, I'm talking more like delays, reverbs, uh, filters, and just we're, we'll, we'll kind of limit ourselves a little bit in terms of source signals, but really do a medium deep dive into into uh effects in super collider so it should be a lot of fun thank you all for watching
I will see you all next week. Take it easy.